Hello everybody and welcome to EMI for Academics week two. Uh, thank you very much for your participation for a second week. Um, it's been really interesting looking at what you've been commenting on both in week one and in week two. Some of you have been following our instructions last week and going back to mm. see what conversations have been occurring beforehand as well as contributing to this week. So thank you very much for that. Um, lots of interesting things to discuss. Yeah. New yeah. week, new themes. Where new shall week, we begin, themes. Mary? I don't know. Oh, where to start? Um, I'm going to start with the word authenticity. And you may think, oh, where's that coming from? Well, that discussion that we had um, about, you know, whether to say I think or I feel, some people might consider that to be, you know, quite a, a, a trivial issue. You know, they could mean the same things. Yeah, for other people, that was quite a big issue. And the reason I think it's important to, to, to remind ourselves that, you know, there are these fine um, differences, fine nuances in, 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 in meaning that distinguish one phrase from another, is when you come to um, a set of um, expressions such as found in the academic phrase bank, um, which is recommended by, I think, by a number of people, and which we do heartily recommend. It's an excellent thorough source of expressions to be used in an academic context. But there's a sort of caveat around um, the academic phrase bank in the sense that um, when you look at these quite long lists of expressions, you might feel that they're sort of interchangeable mm. when in fact they're not. Um, you know, there are nuances um, uh, that distinguish one, one phrase from another that's um, in that same list. So do please, when you look at something like the Academic Phrase Bank, um, think, is that a phrase that I could actually find myself saying, or is it something that I feel I would write? And then if you find that it is something that you might say it, then really say it in real life. And just feel if, it, if it's true to yourself, to, true to your, your, your personality, your character, the way you are in the classroom. And what's becoming evident um, as we get into the discussions and everyone participates, how different we all are as individuals. Um, so, you know, we do have to ch you know, choose our words very, very carefully um, for the classroom and choose what we include, whether we're going to include a humorous anecdote or something. We have to be true to that to ourselves. Um, I could start quoting Shakespeare at this point, but I won't. Um, I don't mm. know if you have any reflections on that. I um, think and feel that would be a bad idea, <laughs> Mary. Yes. Um, yeah. I think the. I can't stop saying I think. I think that, I feel. But yeah, I thought mm. that example is very interesting because it also uncovers. So y lots of people, when you look below the surface mm. of the words, you want to think very carefully about what they mean. Mm. But on another level, if we looked at how people use I think and I feel, um, just dropping the microphone there, um, if we actually looked at how people um, use these terms, often it's, it might be in the context of an academic lecture, it might be doing something different from mm. what we've talked about. It might be that breaking the, uh, maybe the flow of discussion from mm. here are the theories, here's the knowledge, and then simply shifting the focus of the room to a side point, you know, well, I think this is a bit of a, um, you know, a, a misconception in the field, but you need to learn it anyway. Mm. Or I feel this is a bit of a misconception in the field, but you need to learn it anyway. And that kind of function, maybe the literal meaning of the word matters much less than what it is you're actually trying to do. Yes, yeah. in, in the context. Absolutely. Yes. So it's interesting yeah. on two levels. It's, it is very, very interesting. I think a lot of people have come to the course thinking, first of all, of language, whereas we perceive um, English as a medium of instruction to be multifaceted, including aspects of, of, uh, of um, interculturality and um, pedagogy in the classroom. Um, but, you know, you come back to language and then identify the aspects of the expressions that you're using and thinking how appropriate are they for the different 
um, contexts and situations that we find ourselves in. And that's what makes it so very, very interesting. I, I kind of see it as sort of circular, mm. going round and round, you know, visiting different aspects of the EMI um, phenomenon. Um, and in a way, I find it very interesting to come back to language, which is where I had started, then moved on to different things, and now start thinking about um, language in many different ways. Mm. Um, and I'd like to thank you for the um, resources that you've um, suggested with regard to improving our language and our vocabulary. Um, and Eduardo is looking for more websites to help expand his vocabulary. So do please you know, see what other people have contributed and, and make more suggestions, particularly online sources, because mm. um, we, we, we all, you know, we, we don't have access to um, limitless pots of money to buy all the wonderful books That's that we could, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, we would love to buy. So the more we can find online, you know, good online sources to support our language or to make us think about our language. Yes, yeah. And again, a, another thing, in the same boat. I in the same the, There was a comment saying that we're in the same boat. Lots of the resources yes. for us will also be helpful for students, yes. you know, making yeah. them aware of the language that we are using. Mm. Um, I liked, I think you used that phrase, didn't you? What? And last week, in the same boat. In the same boat. A native speaker metaphor. Yes, absolutely. Um, but it's been, it's now caught on and people are commenting saying, yes, we are. Yeah. In the, in the same, same boat. boat. And I think that's it's important to look at these resources mm -hmm. as well for mm -hmm. students as well as yourselves. It yeah. might it might be um, um, an expression that actually translates quite well into other languages mm. um, as opposed to other idiomatic sayings that are totally unhelpful um, in mm. an EMI context. Yeah. Mm. What else um, were you going to talk about, Rob? So I was going to mention there were some interesting discussions mm. around language and mm. the uh, so like how we access students, people mentioned intelligence, the content mm. that they're dealing with without um, going into superficial elements of like what language they're using. I'm really pleased to see people engaging with this idea that sometimes students who aren't necessarily highly proficient in speaking or might have one area of language where they falter, they still can express themselves with criticality and with engagement and with good knowledge um, in perhaps in writing somebody mm. said yes. or you know even with a limited amount of English they might still communicate ideas quite successfully maybe just without the level of grammatical mm. complexity that other mm. people do so I mean that's a very interesting area and again what's clear after a few years of doing this is that different disciplines and different modules that you're teaching might have different implications for how language affects content. Um, and I thought it's quite interesting that people talk about expectations on students' language and linked to what we said last week. I think it's quite interesting that maybe we have to divide our end goal. So maybe we want students to develop certain competencies in language, but I think demanding correct language in in writing or speaking is not necessarily how you meet that end goal yeah. my students won't become more accurate because i demand accuracy of them that's a way yeah. of normally shutting people down and mm. making them very nervous so i think that's an interesting area of discussion and um, i think uh, two summed it up nicely with we need students working cooperatively and collaboratively with each other and we need to work in the same way with them. Um, Mark also said, you know, we need to understand students' backgrounds, backgrounds cultures yes. and learning styles mm -hmm. in order to have this engagement with them. And Ashton mm -hmm. also mentioned um, knowing the level of students and also mm -hmm. the possibilities. So we often watch colleagues. I've watched Mary before. You um, have? I have. I've sat in the corner of your classroom and watched your expert delivery. And again, I think it's a way that teachers learn is to watch other people Ooh, yes. online, watch other people who come and give guest lectures yes. or teach in similar but maybe slightly different uh, discipline areas than your own and seeing what possibilities there are, what tools are there, what strategies are there, what characteristics are there. 
that people communicate when they're teaching, mm. because we don't have all the answers inside ourselves. No, 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 we, we don't. We want to see what other people do. And what other people yeah. do badly. Oh, yes. Well, a let's bad teacher that. is a good lesson. Yes, we'll come to that later. Yes. Mm. Mm. Um, hence, um, we really appreciate the links that you've put up to various TED Talks, for example. Um, so even if, for various reasons, we couldn't observe um, colleagues, we can observe people giving talks and presentations and lectures online. So um, that is open to a lot of us, even if in our particular teaching situations it might be more difficult to go and observe a colleague. Um, which reminds me that um, in the section focus on the voice, there was a lovely exchange between Michael and Barbara, Gabriella, Andrea, and so on. And um, Bar Barbara um, reminds us that a good way of, of, of reflecting on our own practice is to record ourselves. I can't remember whether we mentioned this last week or whether it was on a previous MOOC, <laughs> um, but to record ourselves, whether it's just like on our phone or to actually have somebody um, record us um, so we can see our, our, our gestures, see visually how we come across, how, how we present ourselves mm. to the class is a wonderful tool. I, I hate it. I hate mm. looking at myself on this MOOC. But don't you learn a lot by yes. looking at yourself and listening to yourself? It is the way to go, although it can be a bit painful. It can be. <laughs> I remember walking into an office and I'd given a guest lecture and somebody was watching me giving the lecture. They had <gasps> headphones on so I couldn't see, I couldn't listen to it, but I could see my eyebrows and I noticed I was just <laughs> doing this way too much. And ever since then, I've tried to control my wild eyebrows <laughs> from getting out of the Rob of the I, wild eyebrows. <laughs> yes. But it's, on a serious note, you know, yeah. you don't necessarily know what you no. do. No, you don't. I'm trying to control them now. <laughs> um, you don't necessarily know what you do until you watch yourself under mm. a high mm. pressure situation or an authentic <laughs> teaching situation. Yes. And then you might notice things that go really well and maybe moments of fluency when you go like just comment on something to the side and think, wow, that's really good. I'll do that yeah. more often. Or uh, features of your body language which lose control. So yeah. yeah oh, and one of the things that is coming through is how, how much people want to improve, you know, how, how we want we want to get better we want to give our students the very very best and certainly recording ourselves is is a, a, can enable a big step forward in that in our improvement mm. and it's not something that you do just once at the beginning of your teaching career you know we need it time and time mm. again mm. throughout our teaching career so that we do constantly um, and I'm not just talking about um, EMI here at all, no. but just our general teaching practice, whatever language it might be in. Mm. So Linking I back yeah. to Michael's point last week, Michael Muller. Oh, yes. 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 Okay. Um, I think that's most of what I wanted to say covered. Mm. I don't know if you have anything else. I think, I think we've covered most things, mm. so... Mm so that we can stop people watching the length of the video underneath the video and saying, oh, I'm not watching that. Shall we, <laughs> sh shall we put you out of your misery now? Yes. And if yes. you would like to um, pick up on anything we've said in the video, mm -hmm. perhaps you could comment on this step and, um, and we can follow mm -hmm. through with mm -hmm. some themes if anyone's interested or yes. if anything we've said, you can come up with other non-eyebrow related examples. <laughs> that would be wonderful. So, um, okay, so we'll okay, finish then. here and say thank yeah. you very much for thank participating. You. Thank you We very, look very forward much to seeing indeed. you in week three. In week three. Yes. So, bye-bye. Bye-bye. See you.